distinguished guests on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to thank Barack first for inviting me here and organizing this evening, which as we all know by now is uh, to initiate a commitment made uh, by the Trust and with Burja Foundation to bring electricity to the homes of many rural areas in our country which are devoid of this great facility in modern times today. Last month on the 11th of October, I met the press and uh, we announced the association with Burja Foundation and announced the initiative and we told them that by November we will initiate this process. And I'm very glad that we have kept up the timings and are here today to inaugurate this very important aspect of our social lives. In 1984, I was asked to join politics and I went in there on a very emotional note and uh, was asked to fight an election from Allahabad, which was uh, my birthplace. And it gave me the, the opportunity to visit many rural areas, as do most politicians who are fighting an election, to go around seeking votes. And there was, uh, during the course of that month-long travel of mine, I came across uh, a village. And on reaching that village, um, which, by the way, was not being recommended by many of the supporters that were in the campaign along with me. And I said, why aren't we wanting to go there? They said, no, it's a small village. You're not going to get many votes from there. In any case, it's unimportant. But I don't know why. I just felt that even if it was a small village, I needed to visit it. On arriving at the village, uh, the, the head of the small little community was there to receive us on a, on a very, what we call a kacha road. And they lifted me up in their arms and they carried me right to the interior of where this village was situated. It was a very small place, 30, 40 little huts that were built there. And uh, I asked them, you know, this is really embarrassing, you're picking me up, getting me there, why are you doing this? And they said, no, for the past 20 years, we've never seen the face of a politician. They all come to ask for votes and then they just disappear. And uh, we're very honored that you're here today. So I felt very good about it. And then they took me to the center of the square. And I discovered that there was a small platform right in the middle of the square, which was decorated with flowers and, and uh, lots of incense and poop, which was being lit there. And I wondered, maybe this is a place of prayer for the village. And I asked one of the villagers, I said, uh, this obviously is a place of, uh, of great uh, religious importance because you must be doing your prayers. I said, yes, this is really something that is of great importance to us. And, uh, but I said, you know, I don't see any images or anything like that. They said, no, sir, this place is very sacred to us because um, have a look upstairs. And I looked up, and there was one bulb hanging from different wires that were coming from nearby areas. And he said, this is our God. Because when this lights up at night, the entire village congregates at this platform. And after working in the fields, we get an opportunity to read, to write, to educate our little children. And this is a gift that was given to us by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru 30 years ago. 
that story remained with me because when I came back to the city, I just walked into my room and I pressed the button and about 20, 30 lights came on. And I wondered how these people had existed and lived their lives for the last 30 years with just this one bulb. That story remained with me for many years. Um, I left politics, as perhaps some of you know, uh, within two years and those circumstances in which I left were basically because I was not qualified to be a politician and therefore I left. Um, but it's remained with me and when I had uh, the opportunity to meet Urcha Foundation and they were electrifying the Siddhi Vinayak Temple here, I felt that this was perhaps uh, an opportunity to join hands and work towards this very noble cause. We've had uh, many instances of uh, extending help uh, to people who are in rural areas or who are never talked about it, but because uh, Urja Foundation felt that this was something of importance for the nation, for the country, for society, um, I said fine and uh, we've been going slightly public about this whole matter. I was uh, also, I am rather, also involved in, in the Save the Tiger campaign where India is fast losing its tigers and we've had uh, a disastrous number left now with us. It's about close to 11, 12,000 tigers when at one point in time there were over a lack of them in our country and, and we realized the importance and I work with several organizations and we have a telethon uh, every year in some of the more prominent national parks of the country where we collect funds through, through conversations uh, with them. And their commitment then helps us in collecting funds to, uh, in a sense, provide facilities to the guards that go around the forest because the major portion of the killing of these tigers comes from poachers who use their skin, their nails for various medicinal purposes and they are sent out of the country, uh, places like China, where uh, perhaps the, the nail of the tiger is considered to be very valuable in the making of a lot of medication. And during that time, uh, one of the aspects of, the, of these national parks was that there were a number of villages that were within the confines of this park, and they were, in order to give the tiger uh, a free area, a free space to move around and not be disturbed by any kind of human habitation. Uh, these villagers were asked to sacrifice that piece of land and move out from the forest. And they were repositioned outside the limits of the forest so that the tiger uh, could uh, migrate on its own and uh, propagate, increase the numbers. I also then, during that time, apart from being involved in the telethon to collect funds for saving the tiger, asked if I could go and meet some of these villagers who uh, had been repositioned. And uh, because I felt that this was a great sacrifice they were making, you all, we all know how important it is to hold on to the land that you have through, through your ancestors and how valuable it is. And I felt that this was a great sacrifice that these people were making. And so I went and met them. And they were all very happy people. And they said, uh, we feel that our existence is not so important uh, as the existence of the tiger because when the tiger exists and lives and procreates, the environment also betters itself. And uh, we feel that uh, the, the life of an environment is much more important in our own lives. And so we very readily agree to reposition ourselves. But the problem is that we have been repositioned, but we have no water, and we have no electricity. And that was another story that we made. And I hope that Prague, when uh, we do consider several other locations that uh, 
this is a small village uh, in Rajasthan, uh, very near uh, one of the very prominent national tiger parks, and we hope that we can provide some of them. These are some of the instances that have happened with me, and uh, I've just felt very...